Welcome back to the Now What Podcast. I'm your host, Arian Foster. Uh, we're going to give a special shout out to Smarty Pants Vitamins. Um, they are the sponsor, title sponsor uh, of this podcast, and we appreciate them. So go pick them up. What's if Smarty you, Pants? Smarty Pants is a vitamins company. Okay. Like did you create it? Uh, no, I did not create it, but uh, it's helping create me. Can we get Ooh. some? Yeah. You like that tagline? Did, is that a, did you, you, now you should charge for that tagline. I should. I mean, that, that's not even their tagline, but. They, yeah, but you, you just made it, made it now. <laughs> right. Yeah. We created one, and you, you should do well, that. Well, since you're sure. in our office, we actually own that because you set it on mm-hmm. our properties. Right. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't sign anything yet. Smarty so Pants so. Vitamins. <laughs> they made me make Arian Foster make them. Yeah. yeah. All right, sorry to interrupt your ad. Yeah, I think you're going to uh, <laughs> lose them with that, 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 many, uh, that many words. But nah, so uh, if you don't know those voices, man, they're uh, the cornerstone of Barstool Sports, Big Cat, and PFT. Thank Hello. you for having us. Well, welcome. Yes. Welcome. Thank you for coming to our studio. Yeah, I'm definitely um, on y'all's home turf mm-hmm. yes. doing my podcast, which I appreciate. Yeah. Because you saved me studio renting time, uh, money, and then you also... Um, Feel free to wet the beak a little bit on mm-hmm. that. Yeah, kick little, some back. Yeah, I got some loose change on you, just slide it across the table. Uh-huh. What is wet the beak? You just give us a little, little taste. taste. You know, a little taste of the, taste of the profit. I mean, how much would you pay to rent this a is studio? Probably, a few, this is probably the most... 300, 400 bucks? This is probably the most uh, popular podcast in the world right now. One of them. Yours? Um, and you're asking me to wet the beak. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Yours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yours. Yeah. <laughs> Which you've been on. Appreciate I have it. been on. Yes. You've actually been on it twice. Yeah, I have. I have I was on it twice. You were on, yeah, it, you were on one time you were yeah. recording it yeah. from your pool. You know what? So, <laughs> little, 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 pre- little prep, I, I, I should probably address that. So, I was on their their podcast, which um, one of the first one didn't air because it was bad reception. Mm-hmm. So, that was an asshole move. I was, um, I didn't want to get out of the pool. I mean, I get it. No, if, if you, I had a pool, I would do yeah, all my interviews yeah. from the pool. So, There's no problem on our part. Okay, cool. So you probably like, that dude's a dick because he didn't want to. But I was oh, like, oh no, we thought that for sure. <laughs> Let's just clarify here. We thought you were a dick, but it was no problem because you know what, we're dicks too. <laughs> it's my, it's my, it's my apology, yeah. man. And, um, I'm glad we could, we could do it because I thought that was yeah. a really good, good yes. interview, man. So welcome, man. Um, this is a uh, interesting. I've never done a uh, podcast in anybody else's podcast studio, so this is this is weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're on our territory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it looks like shit in here. I'm sure you've been in nicer podcast studios. Uh, mine is definitely nicer than this. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's the New York building culture is like that. It's real rustic and it's real. I mean, rustic is a euphemism for worn shitty. down. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's like, it's not very nice buildings in New York. Yeah. Right. It's like you go to a bed and breakfast with your girlfriend and they're like, oh, it's very rustic and it's just a barn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's <'cause laughs> just horse shit on the ground. Yeah. yeah. And they right. charge you an extra $50 for the authentic feel. It's yeah. definitely a $20 word for sure. <laughs> yeah. You get the cozy apartment that's 250 square feet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. But it's cozy. Exactly, man. So I want to dig into the, 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 the crux of, of how you guys started this podcasting phenomenon that is Barstool Sports. Okay. Because it's it's so huge. I had no idea really how huge it was um, until I got on it. And then when I got on it, I was like, holy shit, this following is massive. And then you guys have like subsets of podcasts trickling off and like yep. you're going to try to dominate. You're like the Matrix and Mr. An- Mr. Anderson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're trying very to, get, every- trying to yes. get everybody's podcast. Yes. We're trying to brainwash America very slowly. When you plug in the internet, there's like a half, a 50% chance you're listening to one of our podcasts. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're trying for. But so, uh, yeah. Yeah, so Barstool Sports. Well, so it started... I think 16 years ago, 15 years ago, by Dave Portnoy, our boss. And he started it, and it was just a blog. And then it's been kind of an incremental growth. We went to the city model. I started Barstool Chicago like six years ago. And uh, PFT and I found each other on the internet, just two dudes picking each other up on the internet. Yeah, Not, n- love story, don't, yeah. yeah, don't make it weird, okay? Totally cool. Um, and then we started Part of My Take uh, two years ago. And I think the biggest thing that we've had you know go our way is that the world is very serious and the world uh you have like if you if you if you look at the sports world it's people who are doing x's and o's and then a lot of people who are taking themselves too seriously and forgetting mm-hmm. that you know sports are kind of fun and we've <coughs> kind of right in the middle of that where sometimes we'll say something interesting and smart but a lot of times we're just you know fucking around and having fun mm-hmm. and people gravitate towards someone who can make them laugh and someone who can talk about sports in a way that's you know it's fun that we don't lose that we're we're, we're fans at heart and we're meatball fans and dumb fans I know we busted your balls because like you 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 obviously know the athlete side well we know the fan side so when <laughs> someone gets injured we're like what the fuck our fantasy team is fucked <laughs> and so you know making jokes on that and, and having fun with that is what people resonate with right mm-hmm. it's it's an interesting um dynamic like it, because 
I mean, do you have trouble? I mean, this with the utmost respect, but do you have trouble getting taken seriously when you're trying to get taken seriously? Um, I think probably at first we did, but we had a, a good kind of string of luck at the beginning where we got a lot of athletes became fans of ours, right? Like up front, and so then the word kind of spread through their locker rooms where like. It was um, it was to the point where a lot of people on teams they'd be like, okay, we trust these guys. We'll go on their show. So we didn't have to necessarily be taken seriously because they just liked us, you know. Right, right. But I think we do struggle sometimes with getting taken seriously. That's more like barstool overall. Um, because I've been, I you know, I've been with barstool for six years now, or maybe even seven. I can't. I lose track of time because internet time is fucks your brain up. Definitely. But there definitely was a time where. People would, and I'm not even talking about like getting scoops or anything like that. I'm talking just, you know, funny things, videos that we made, and people would just kind of write it off as sophomoric and frat boyish. And of course, there's an element of that with everything we do, but there's also an element where I think we're pretty entertaining guys. And you've seen a shift in the media recently recognize what we're doing and the force that we're bringing. Right. And being more than just oh we can write them off they're just nothing but a little blog right. yeah I think at yeah, a certain definitely point not a little blog. yeah, yeah. They, they, just, right. they just couldn't <clears throat> ignore us anymore they tried to ignore us for as long as as they could really and then once it kind of reached a saturation point they're like okay we might as well embrace these guys a little bit right so, so was there like a, um, a cognizant uh, choice was like we need to do this is this is a lane that's missing in sports and in media period I think hmm. I think for the most part it was just Big Cat and I trying to make each other laugh. <laughs> and, and like if we're able to do that I know if I'm able to do something that I find funny then that's all I really care about and then other people you know they, they listen to it and they kind of have a similar sense of humor and they, they'll like it too but I never really set out to do anything um, to please anybody except for just like us, just me, Hank, and Big Cat. Yeah, and it's it's really, that's what it is. It's being yourself. Right. So if you look at, if you turn on the TV and you see a big, uh, you know, T, you know, a set where Sports Center or Fox Sports are on these big sets. Everyone's <laughs> in ties and dresses and really dress up nicely. Ties like, and dresses, right? But you know <laughs> what I mean. Like they they look really nice. They look like they're going to a wedding. It's like okay, but we're talking about sports. Right. And I, I, I don't really care about that. You know, I don't. Right. Care. So I think there is a part of what works for us is that we're relatable and we are who we are, and we kind of just we're hey, if we screw something up, like we'll do a podcast maybe the audio is bad if we do a video maybe the video you know what I mean like we wear shitty clothes and and we're pretty much what we are and I think people gravitate towards that because we're approachable in that yeah. respect I mean because I, even like growing up watching ESPN <clears throat> you know it's a facade it's a, mm -hmm. it's a huge facade and, and you have to keep that up too because you have corporate sponsors and all that right. stuff um, is there is there an element where you get backlash from your like original fan or like you guys oh, yeah. shouting out oh yeah big time so we get that's that's part of <laughs> growth and it's been if you if you chart the growth of Barstool it's been it was a slow grind for a really long time and then Peter Chernin, uh the Chernin group bought us and then it's been kind of a rocket ship from there All so right. the two years that we've been in New York have been crazy growth we've went from I think two years ago we had 12 employees we have 100 now Jeez. so yeah it's been crazy and I think that with anything that grows, you're going to have a bunch of people say, I miss the old stuff. Mm. I miss that. Like, nostalgia is real. Buy my old album. Right. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and, like the, the, when I, and my answer to that is, well, I miss doing the old stuff too sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, I miss blogging 15 blogs a day in my apartment <laughs> in Chicago. Is there, but, a, is there a distinct difference between the old bar still and the new bar still? I It was a definitely... I think what people, if you if you really want to like pin it down to exactly what people miss, I think they miss that we were uh, real like underdogs in the respect that we couldn't do anything mm. right, and <laughs> you know we were like really really dumb, which we still are. That's actually an we've asset hired that some we have, smart I people. <laughs> right? I no, think I'm, I'm serious. Like, Big Cat brought up earlier when we have shitty audio in a podcast or something like that. Yeah, it it, it kind of sucks for us sometimes, but it's kind of good that it keeps us a little bit more relatable. That we'll we'll screw up a show big time. We'll just be like, all right, we're screwing this up right now. We'll right. just admit it. We'll be honest, and then people will, you know, they'll make fun of us for it. We'll make fun of ourselves, and it becomes kind of like it, it. It's more of a community than it is us performing on a stage for you know right. a bunch of people. And we right. still are underdogs because we still are not the mainstream media. We're still not. Uh, we're still outsiders. We don't get credentials for things. A lot of people don't, you know. Really? Yeah, they'll, like they'll do, they'll take something from one of our interviews and not credit us. So we're still the underdog. It's just changed because we're bigger 
And we've hired smart people who tell us, hey, you guys are idiots. Let us handle this side of it. (laughs) So I think, you know, people do miss us fucking up all the time. I personally... They don't like the growth. I personally (laughs) prefer not to fuck up all the time. Like we used to do shows on Skype every single day and people miss that. And I, I totally understand it. So completely warranted feeling to miss that like old grittiness but i from my perspective i don't miss having skype break every day yeah. and having a conversation where it lags and you have to like figure out what the person said even though yeah. you couldn't hear the water down mm-hmm. the, the product right just trying to deliver. right yeah. correct so i think we've gotten better and stronger but of course it's like the band you know you i saw that band playing in the basement you know of a of a dive bar now they're playing in an arena and the fans who were fans of the band when they were in the da- basement of the dive bar they're gonna say i was a fan yeah. first yeah. i mean it's always, it's always like that that corporate bloom usually right leaves some people on the bottom like it's hey, totally and it's totally understandable for me right I, I don't i don't begrudge anyone who misses the old stuff i just say to them hey i think we're doing a lot of new stuff that's that the sum of the new stuff is way better than just the little bit that we used to do right. in the old stuff <clears throat> do you um because that's a that's an interesting dynamic from going from like the underdog to because like you you the barstool sports is what it is it's like one of the biggest podcast platforms in that world mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so like you're you've gone from underdog to overseer yeah <laughs> yeah and you you still you have that underdog tag right. really though which yeah. is which is I, I mean i don't know the numbers but like you guys probably have more viewership than like a espn on on our podcast yes. yeah yeah i mean it's, sure it's during like august and september we get our asses kicked by matt barry and the fantasy football podcast yeah. when everybody's doing their drafts right but i think the rest of the year we're, we're usually on top of espn and you're right, it is, it's really strange because we kind of got to where we're at. I don't want to say by taking shots, but we would take shots in, like, in a funny, satirical way. We'd make fun of you know Mike and Mike. We'd make fun of some of the shows on ESPN. And in the last two years, now it's like if we go after Mike Greenberg on Get Up, it's not that funny. We anymore. actually had a conversation yeah. about that so because that was, it, yeah. it's like we're punching down <laughs> yeah, on we, Mike Greenberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I had a I had a uh, comedian named Steve Hofstetter. He, he was on my podcast, and he that's what he was saying. It was the dynamic of it's it's kind of why you there's not a lot of conservative comedy. Mm-hmm. It's because like punching down isn't funny. Right, what punching up is. punching up is yeah. yes. you can punch laterally, you can punch up. But yeah, the get up thing is a perfect example. They they brought the show. You know, it debuted. There's been a ton written about how much they have spent on it. The viewership has been really really bad, and everyone's piling on and we made a couple jokes about it and then we're like wait we're kind of punching down here because yeah. everyone's piling on them like it's not that we don't it's not that we can't make those jokes it's not like we're like oh we're we, you know we know a couple of those guys which we don't even know anyone at, on that show <laughs> it's more just it's not as funny when you're punching down to then you're a, a show yeah, that's yeah. just smaller like than a jerk you. Yeah. yeah exactly but at the same time it makes you kind of develop different creative muscles yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If the only thing that you know if you just go after people that's only one type of joke that you can continue to make you All have right. to kind of evolve once you get to a point where it's that, not funny good that's what i was going to ask like is there is there a cap to um the the underdog prestige because then if you're i mean if you're doing bigger numbers in ESPN you're really no longer the underdog mm-hmm. but you still have that that banner for right. some re- weird reason i think it's more so your fan base than yeah. anything else but is there like a cap on i right, we've 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 done the underdog thing too long now we well i i mean the reason why i think <clears throat> we're still underdogs is one we don't really and this comes from the top down uh, our boss doesn't really. I mean, w- he doesn't really care what who he offends or what he says. <laughs> and sometimes it'll, it'll be even like we'll lose sponsors for something. You know what I mean? It's like so that vibe where it's not as much of a corporate like right. we have to follow the rules here. You know, we got to go through every single step. Um, we also are by design really like small. We're still we're big, but we're small in our different units. So mm-hmm. if we want to go do something, we just go do it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we're gonna go down down south for a thing we call Grit Week, where we just hop in a van and go interview people. Like ESPN, if they want to do that, they have to get it greenlit. They have to go through all this stuff. Right. They have to, you know, it has to be all these production trucks and stuff. Right. We're basically gonna have one cameraman and a podcast equipment. So that that keeps our underdog vibe. And to be totally honest, we failed at TV twice. So yeah. I think I think that we're still an underdog in that respect. Yeah. That we can't, we haven't been able to prove ourselves mm-hmm. in that medium. I want to definitely get to that, but before we do, like the, um, <clears throat> I want to double back on the credential thing. Like, mm-hmm. how are you guys not able to get credentials? Is it like a well, it's okay. the NFL really for well, the most part? Well, yeah, and also we should we should definitely say that a lot of times we forget to apply. <laughs> 
So that's part of it. That's definitely <laughs> part of it. Like we 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 are. I think we are like batting a thousand when it comes to saying, oh, we should try to get credentials and looking it up and being like the the deadline for credentials passed three days ago. <laughs> that that without fail we do that. Right. Like we got kicked out of a dog show a year and a half ago, but that's just because we applied for credentials the day before the dog show right. started. It's not because we were badasses and Westminster was like, oh no, we can't have yeah. these guys coming. Yeah. They just the were NFL, like, no, yeah. you're, you're a month late on the yeah. registration. Right. Exactly. But the NFL does have us banned. Yes. So that one so they is they banned you. Is they it, banned it, us. Is it because you ride on Roger Goodell? That it's because mostly for uh, for Hank, I think. Yeah. Well, Hank went to our producer. Hank went to jail for Tom Brady along with three other of our coworkers. Uh, yeah, I think it probably has something to do with. Uh, is that a real thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, they went to jail. They they, they went to the league protested. office and yeah. they handcuffed themselves to each other. I think. <laughs> Are you uh, fucking when, when they yeah. suspended Tom Brady for four games and then uh, they got arrested, spent the night in the holding cell. <laughs> yeah. And so Roger Goodell was like, maybe I won't credential this organization. Anymore. Yeah. Which, I, to be fair, yeah, is, that, I can is that on video? From his perspective. Yes. Oh, I got it. We're going to put that sense. up in the podcast. Yeah. I probably wouldn't credential us either. Yeah. Um, and, and it's reached the point where I actually prefer to not be credentialed mm-hmm. by the NFL because it's, you know, we, we can go around and do creative stuff during Super Bowl week, during the draft without having credentials and we don't have to, you know, sit in a press conference with 200 other people and write down the exact same quotes. Like it gives us a different angle on all the stuff. And and you, I'm sure you've seen it with your podcast. The beauty of where the internet has gone is that if you are talented and funny, people will find you whatever medium you're on. Like it used to be that if you wanted to talk about sports, you had to sit around and be a producer on, you know, the night shift on your local sports station. Then you had to be a producer on the afternoon shift. And then maybe, maybe you got lucky and got one of those chairs in one of the, you know, three shows that go on during Mm -hmm. the day. Now, if you're funny and you're and you're entertaining and, and you're compelling and people want to listen to you, you can start a podcast. And we went to when we were at Super Bowl week, you walk through Radio Row. Yeah. And you see all these guys and I mean they they all I, I, I don't know if they love their job. I don't know, but I know I that I love my yeah, job. I don't think they do. Right? And I'm able to do everything I want to do without having to be inside those ropes. And right. you probably find the same way. Like right. you, you know, if this was 10 years ago, you probably would have retired and then been like, all right, well, let's see if I can, you know, get on the yeah. CBS morning show or maybe yeah. I can do Texans pregame. Now you don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah. no, fuck no. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? That would have been your, me- that been yeah. your only route if I wanted for to. a media yeah, yeah, yeah. post-career. What was right. that like for you when you were thinking about retirement? Did you ever, did you do some of the like Texans media stuff? Did you... You know, sit in for an afternoon at a local sports channel. How did you make that transition? Yeah, no, absolutely not. I didn't. <laughs> I, w- I wanted to stay far away from football as possible, but I understand that's where my base comes from. But uh, I, th- I feel like if you was ever, if you were ever a fan of me, you kind of knew. I never really um, identified myself as like an NFL football. I never introduced myself as, "Hey, I'm an NFL player." Like right. I hated that tag anyway because mm-hmm. you, you had to fight all those stereotypes. Um, what but, like that you're rich and, and really good at <laughs> at a sport well, and not, good looking? Like yeah. Those stereotypes <laughs> suck, man. I agree. I would never introduce myself I as an NFL the football fan. Man. <laughs> but uh, no, I think it's more so um, you have to fight this intellect curve that people think you have. So yeah, that's you, fair. So when you walk in a room and you say, oh, you're so well-spoken, you're like, oh, well, you're kind of piece of shit for yeah, thinking I wasn't right. going to be well-spoken. <laughs> right. right. I don't care what uh, people say about you. I think you're pretty smart. <laughs> uh-huh. Thanks, man. Yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as, I, as, as a train, I never really re- wanted to get into podcasting, right? So um, it was my man, um, Humble. He he hit me up and he was like, yo, I really think you can get into podcasting. I was like, why do you think that's a thing? And he's like, it's really big. I had never listened to podcasts before. It just wasn't my thing. Um, and he's like, there's there's really a lot of money in it. And not only that, he said, I want you to keep your voice relevant because mm-hmm. you have a lot to say. And I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. And then that whole wolf thing took off. I was just in LA. I was in my bed just tweeting random shit like I always do. And I said I could beat up a wolf. Mm-hmm. And yep. pe- people felt like I, c- I couldn't. And people felt strongly that I couldn't. And it just it was like a national conversation. The 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 National Wolf Institution. It was wolf yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was insane. Um, and so I got invited on Rogan. And uh I, I had heard Rogan's before and maybe I watched one or two of his interviews um, and, I, and I looked at him in his interviews that was part of the reason I didn't like podcasting but I went on his and I was like yo this is a dope conversation I dug back in his catalog I was like yo this is really dope shit that he does he gets to sit down and talk to like the intellects and the, the movers of our society mm-hmm. and I was like that's something I want to do because even if even if I don't get to grow from it Somebody else may have that opportunity. Yeah, we could just have that conversation, and so that that's really when I was like, "This is this is a thing." And so I, I had a little bit of a fan base, and that's another thing when you transition out of the NFL that people don't tell you about is like your fan base does not 
correlate. Go right. with they you. don't yeah. give a shit yeah. anymore, right? right. You're just like, like you're no you're longer on the roster. Up. I don't, I don't know how many times I say you're washed up. I'm like, the only ones that care are like the 40 uh, year old fat guys who want your autographs so they can sell it on eBay. Yeah, and even that that goes away because your value decreases as you yeah. age. So, mm-hmm. um, so you have to. I have to rebuild a fan base, and that's been the fun part for me. Actually, is rebuilding a fan base is like you know what? Holy shit. I like the way he thinks. I like the way he talks and articulates, um, which I had that all along. But when you're a football player, that gets overshadowed by how well you run. You know right. what I mean? And, right. I, and I hated that stigma. That's why I never, like if I was out by myself in New York and didn't get recognized, they're like, what do you do? I used to say, I play chess. Right. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere I went, I used to say, I play chess. Do you actually play chess? Absolutely. Did you, have you gone to like Washington Square Park? Yeah, I got my ass. Warped. They're good, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Actually, actually, you know, I'm coming out with a uh, with an album, and one, a part of it is this docu series. And in and in one of those parts, I go to play chess with the, with one of those cats, and mm-hmm. he whooped my ass like three times in a row. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Yeah, I, I've, really I've, I've, I've lost in like two minutes there. Do you yeah, ever, exactly. do, do you ever get mad? Not mad. Mad's not the right word, probably. But do you ever look at how the NBA treats their athletes and lets them kind of speak their mind and get disappointed that the NFL doesn't? do the same I, I've, I've i've said this plenty of times that it's it not only do they let them speak their mind they encourage them to. absolutely like they send out memos like, like be socially conscious yeah like what kind of shit is this great right. like, mm-hmm. i couldn't even imagine I, football has such an old school um slave mentality and what i mean by that by slave plantation mentality where it's like you do the work and you don't say anything you mm-hmm. just you just do that and i, I don't want to correlate being a millionaire football player to a slave because it's not what I'm, I'm saying but there is that structure there and that structure um it it even when you look back like to like the college football days of like when bear bryant was doing his thing that structure is still alive today but that's where it came from right. it came from those plantations do you think though because I always, I always, it's like a chicken and the egg. Like, do you think that it's? I think it's partly because the NFL, the roster's bigger. You're you're more expendable. Whereas in the NBA, if you are a you know superstar, so to speak, a top twenty guy, mm-hmm. no one's going to do any. You you control your own destiny. Right. You mm-hmm. have so much power mm-hmm. because you are the franchise, and there's not many other pieces around you. And a guy like LeBron, who I don't. I don't like LeBron. I'm an MJ guy. <laughs> We're going to get into that. Okay, yeah, we'll get into that. But LeBron, I mean, he has done a ton in terms of, like, if your leader, if the if the top guy speaks his mind, it lets everyone else speak their mind. Right. Like, if Tom Brady or Peyton Manning or one of these guys was, you know, out there speaking their mind about political issues, I bet you you'd see a lot more NFL players that were able to right. do it. Well, that's, that's the problem is that when it happens, um, they don't look at, Football players as so if I was to speak my mind politically, uh, I'm I'm very well I don't say very well but I'm I'm pretty well versed in politics in history and I'm a student of this shit right so if I was to say something politically I wouldn't even get taken seriously mm-hmm. it doesn't matter because it, 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 even you have intellectuals on the right side and intellectuals on the left side somebody who's super well educated and smart on the right will say something and somebody who's super well educated on the left will say what an idiot right right and mm-hmm. so that's what you have to tr- they, they want to try to avoid is that banter and then that that tug of war in in the NFL they just mm-hmm. don't want that bad right. press but it's it's insane to me because if you look at any uh, like w- I think we have a responsibility as Americans to be socially conscious like right. we have a vote like and these vote these votes directly affect legislations and 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 the laws that are being passed which directly mm-hmm. affect people's lives so you have a responsibility to know what's going on so even if you speak your mind you, you should have that um who is a Martin Luther King quote he said never never dep- uh, deprive somebody of the uh of the opportunity to struggle mm-hmm. because so like if you if we say something have the opportunity to be corrected by somebody or mm-hmm. be open to that it's so important. maybe I'm, I'm just a little bit jaded but i i've kind of reached this point recently where i don't think anybody changed their changes no. their mind anymore no i mean the, the state right. of discourse in the country right now especially online especially right. if you spend more than five minutes on the internet right. you'll see it like i don't see a lot of common ground being reached anymore i just right. see like people screaming at each other all well, right. it, go ahead it, well i was gonna say do you because i was uh, i was gonna make a similar point do you think do you look at guys like us where we have a huge platform but we don't really speak about politics ever? Right. do you look do you think that we're doing a disservice to people because i agree with pft and we've we've always made a, a, a very 
very strong part of our show to like, hey, we're not going to get into politics. We want to make people laugh. This is their relief from the real world. Right, right. And when you add in how everything has gone the last year and a half, it's like if you if you say anything on Twitter, someone's going to disagree with you. Mm-hmm. Someone's going to assume you know which party you you know you, you you vote for. All these assumptions get made, and no one ever. Has their mind changed on right, Twitter? Right. Ever? Right. Um, so you're saying you're a Trump fan? No, I'm saying no. So I, I was going to ask you. I was going <laughs> to yeah. ask you if you could go back in time, would you still vote for Trump again? Uh, that is a great question. <laughs> no, no. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you again. Oh, I just snuck that in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> See what I did a little there. podcasting trick. Yeah. Again. Shout out Rosillo. But I'll tell you what. That's a good point, though. Um, in a second. But to your point, uh, I. I am an av- so this is why I understand why the NFL is doing what it's doing. Um, but if this is a very multi layered question, because <clears throat> if you look at what the internet is, it is a it's a baby. It's we're just now scratching the surface of what this thing is and what we what it's capable of. And so the political climate in today's uh, in in the country today is a direct result of we don't know how to handle all of this information. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. I agree with that. That was in sync. God damn. Yeah. No, I, no, right. <laughs> no that, that's a good that, point. That's actually really yeah. insightful. I agree. Like, this is the Facebook shit yeah, that's exactly. going on right now. It, People can't yeah. fathom that Facebook so, would harvest all of our data. Right. Like, of course they would. Yeah. And but we Google, haven't been, we haven't been Google, there yet. Yeah, 100%. Right. And so, um, I, I don't feel like I'm a prophet, but I feel like I saw this coming. So, um, about two years ago, I I made a conscious effort, and I say it all the time on my podcast. I made a conscious effort to to follow guys like Ben Shapiro, to follow guys like Paul Joseph Watson, to follow guys like I oh, do you're not getting agree woke. with. You're getting woke. Well, I don't agree with a lot yeah. of what they say, uh-huh. but I made a conscious effort to follow the super right wing, the the super moderate. Yep. The, so you were so, two years before Kanye. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's smart. <laughs> but but because if you don't, and it's, I, I I preach this to people, if you don't follow the the news sources that you don't agree with then you're just going to create this echo chamber that you live in Absolutely. and you're never wrong Absolutely. and then when you're never wrong you'll never grow and right. then if you're confronted with somebody with a different point of view your response is like this person is insane yeah and every you don't you exactly. don't see them as a human exactly anymore. and yeah. so that's why that's why when when they don't want athletes speaking about politics or shut up and play or shut up and, that's stupid to me because it's an opportunity to have a, sit down and have a civil discord uh, 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 conversation about Whatever the, whatever the case may be because like it or not there are people in this country who feel marginalized they could be mm-hmm. wrong they could be right but there are people that feel like that so let's sit I think everyone feels marginalized I think that's why the internet's just like crumbling because everyone's <laughs> like white guys now feel marginalized, which is insane. <laughs> right, exactly. That's my point. You could make a, you could, you could raise your hand and be like, "I'm marginalized. I'm marginalized." They, ha- they have, they have like, point. no, not everyone's marginalized. They, ha- they have a point to a certain extent where it's like this. So it's like, um, so like the word nigger, right? So like y'all, y'all Whoa. can't, yeah, y'all can't publicly say the word nigger like no. that, right? So like that's 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 marginalization. Well, you can, but you, you're gonna get punched in the yeah, face. Yeah, say so. But that's marginaliz- marginalization to somebody who who doesn't understand the context of why that is is right uh-huh. but th- that's why that's why these conversations are so important mm-hmm. that's why i feel like it's it's super important to have these conversations what so, about white guys that can't play cornerback there hasn't been a cornerback jason seahorn was yeah. the last one. Oh my god i have yeah, never even thought well, about chris conti yeah. tried he well he tr- I, I wouldn't call that yeah, he yeah, tried. Cornerback. tried i've never even thought about yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time we're the most persecuted class <laughs> we absolutely <laughs> are we absolutely are. Yeah, now all the white guys are out yeah. there stuck playing quarterback yeah. and, and general That's manager. Up. Right. And <laughs> offensive uh, line. Yeah. God, God started, damn it. Uh, they got to own the teams now. What yeah. the hell? <laughs> you going to start a Tiki Wait. Torch rally talking about yeah. the uh, So wait, I have a question for you. Corners and representation. Do you yeah. blame people, though, for... I, I agree with you on the... let's. You should follow people that are outside of your bubble. Mm-hmm. But I also understand human nature and like we're pack animals right we want to be part of a tribe but you want to feel like you're connected to someone true so when people hop on twitter and they curate their own you know followers or or, you know who they're following Mm -hmm. they're going to do like-minded people because they want to feel like they're included in something they're included in a joke they're included in a discourse so i it's it's kind of fucked up to say but I'm, I've become more and more of a cynic as I've gotten older. It's like, no, there's nothing you can really do because right. people are just, that's their that's people the are, natural inclination to find someone that's like you. An ongoing uh, saying on my podcast is people are fucking stupid. Yeah. People are just stupid. I'm and, stupid. And so, yeah, but there's there's levels, man. People are are, are incapable of, of um, fighting their own bias. You have got to be conscious of that because if you're not, you're, you're, you're going to end up 
it is like that's th- this this climate right now is the blowback from uh years and years of people not really knowing what's going on right mm-hmm. so when <clears throat> I, I don't i'm not i'm unsure of how aware you guys were before all of this shit that people felt like the police were constantly mm-hmm. hounding them right it was it was it was known in my neighborhoods when we grew up like it's known like it was a, it was a thing police are that's what they do they harass us like th- like that that narrative has been running through our neighborhood for years but when you bring it to light um, it brings up a lot of emotion because not everybody deals with that, and right. then you have to deal, you have to de- delve into why people feel like they deal with that. And a lot of the a lot of the issues right now is especially like on the right wing, they'll say, <clears throat> well, the, the the representation in jails and crime and, and yada yada. That they they pull out these stats, but the problem with that is. Um, you can't quantify social science the way you can like hard science, right? Like, how do you quantify uh, some like somebody harassing you? Right. Like, mm-hmm. like, there's no data. Nobody. You don't because you can't go to the police to tell you tell them the police that the police are fucking with you, right? right. So that's been going on for years. And this is just a small sample size of of what I'm talking about, and it's it's across all spectrum from gay people to I mean people feel marginalized in this country, so it's important for you to listen to the other side and you. You shouldn't try to shun anybody's voices is the main thing, which is why what the NFL, how they handle these situations is just stupid to me. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm I'm really interested to see what happens in the next CBA, because it seems like the last time they negotiated the, the CBA and the NFL, there were a lot of these social issues that were starting to bubble up at that point. Right. But it never, it, the online climate especially wasn't anything like it is right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm expecting like some real, real dirty play coming from the owners and from the, and from the players like it's going to be contentious, and um, you know when you're reaching that point, the players don't have they don't really have to listen to the owners. At the point. We don't have a CBA in place. Yeah, um, they're going to be free to speak their mind. They're going to be like playing a little faster and looser with it. Yeah, um, and I wonder what's going to happen with that because especially like you know we're talking about the NBA. Part of the reason why they're able to to you know tell their players okay you know um, be, feel free to speak your mind about any issue that you want is because you know the the contracts are set up. Where the players have so much more power right. in that league, and I think the NFL yeah, it's players guaranteed money, right? It's guaranteed right. money. The NFL players see what the NBA has, and I think they're going to try to push for something, whether it's guaranteed money, all yeah, that they stuff. They have to. And it's going to be tough. They it's, have it, to. It's going to be an ugly scene that plays out in the next right. few years. Because I mean, really, when it comes down to it, the NBA. I mean, David Stern was a good commissioner. I think people will look at him and and the growth he had. But Adam Silver is like a true. Players commission, yeah, I think, in really that good. he's looking out for the players, not the owners. Mm-hmm. Where in the NFL, it's kind of flipped, yeah. and and I understand. Isn't I mean, he, doesn't Gre- he get paid by them? Yeah, right. That's right. the thing is, but he, but I think that, the, and you see the success the NBA has had because I, I don't know. I mean, when you're attached to these guys, when you know them kind, not personally, but you know what their thoughts are and everything. I think that finds yeah. it. It makes yeah. the game but his, more his interesting. His door is open, right? So right. His door is yeah. open. Like they probably got each other's numbers. Like I right. tried to reach out to, to to Goodell a couple of times How'd about that some issues. Like. I was in New York one time and I and I, I walked up to his office and I think he was like, yeah, bring him up because it was like, we can show you take player a picture, representation. Right. Yeah. Right. But it's like, then when uh, some real shit happened, like that Ray Rice situation happened, mm-hmm. like I grew up in a domestically violent household and I thought that they handled that shit awfully, right? In what way? Um, like in the... So the, I'll tell you, yeah. so if... <clears throat> so like, growing up in that, in, in that in that household, I understand that Domestic violence is not uh, an athlete thing, right? Police officers deal with it. Firefighters deal with it. Ex-military deal mm-hmm. with it. Accountants, accountants, everyone. It is a it is a nation nationwide pro- global right. problem. So you have an opportunity to have a real conversation, and instead of this, oh, he's suspended for two games. And it, the way they did it was so shitty, right? They're reactive, not proactive. Of course. They fucking saw the video. Yeah. And even if they didn't, what did you think domestic violence looked like? Right. right. Did you know it was a slap well, they, on the hand? They started getting dragged out of the elevator. Yeah. So what do you it's think a, happened and, and, inside and, there? And, and, and I'll preface it with no way do I condone that shit. Because I, I saw my mother go through hell with that shit. And it tore our family apart. Like, do not get, do not get that wrong. But there, there has been mending and there has been healing in my family. Because, you know, we all sat down and said, how do we want to grow from this? Right. right. And, in, and in order for... In order in order for the, I feel like if you want to have that 
that dialogue, you have to ha- you have to be truthful, and to, there's some ugly truth sometimes. Right. And if you really wanted to help the Ray Rice Ray Rice's family, then you then you offer counseling, then you do these kind of things like let's 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 mediate this, let's 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 get Ray back in the league to try to try to have him speak out on some of these issues because it's a, it's a problem and it's not a football problem. It's a it's a it's a human being problem, mm-hmm. and they just they, they handled it terribly and they just shun everything, they sweep everything under the rug until they have to address it, and then yeah. when they have to address it, they're like we, they listen to the people who said we need stern action, and it's just it's just bullshit. And it's it's so disingenuous. Yeah, yeah. and then I Goodell's agree. reaction to things a lot of times is, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start my own like police department inside the NFL, right? And that's gonna solve yeah. everything. And their job is gonna be like investigate all these it, domestic violence situations. I, I mean, none of it. What you just said is a great point, but those conversations will never happen because the NFL's goal when anything like this happens is just keep business going as yeah. usual and yeah. just do, let's <clears> have no hiccups. And if we have to cut this one guy and black, you know, not let him get on another NFL roster, so be it. Because guess what, Sunday is going to come around yeah. soon enough and, and, a, and everyone's going to watch and it, it's, it's that people deal with shit day in and day out man like if the narrative like even with the, the Me Too movement stuff like I, I, I understand it like I, I get it but if the narrative just becomes if you make one mistake and then your whole career is ruined and, and granted there are levels to what kind of mistake you can make I, I agree but if if every single thing every single thing becomes an execution then you leave in the door open for a, 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 a standard of society that nobody can fulfill yeah I know I would totally agree <clears throat> because I think the Me Too movement has been huge and it had to happen but where it got a little lost was when people uh, started throwing a guy who maybe all right. So let's say a guy who's a, a rapist, the right. scum of the universe, right. the worst of the worst of society. For sure. For sure. And then when you when you when you put him in the same breath as maybe a guy who sent a couple inappropriate emails, right? Like those aren't they're those aren't the same. The same. They're not mm-hmm. the same. They're both ba- they're both bad in their own respect. Right. One, but one can be fixed. Yes. One can you, one you can like teach people. This is how you yeah. you know respect people. This is how you act because, in the workplace. I mean, we have, the rapist got to go to jail. Yeah, you got to go. You got to get right. out of here, bro. Got to like, go to I'm jail not, and like. That, but those shouldn't be <clears throat> like, all in the there, same. There cup. should be hundred percent right. There should be boundaries that are discussed openly and honestly right. amongst all of us. Um, people, and now you have now the, you have the blowback where people are like, oh, I can't do anything. It's like, no, that's not the yeah, point that's not, of that's it. Not the point, the point right? is yeah. that act yeah. like a decent human yeah, being. Yeah, act like a decent fine. human being. We're not saying that like you just can't make jokes. You yeah. can't like that's, that's not a, that's not the takeaway. And here. that's the thing. Being a non-religious person is I I preach all the time that morality is subjective. If morality was objective, we wouldn't have any of these problems. Or are you actually preaching <clears> it if you're not religious? Whoa. Mind blown. Whoa. Yeah, nice. You got me there, bro. <laughs> Whoa. No, no. You, I mean, you make a good point. Like, yeah. How how do you define that? Some right. people need a book. Telling them what you 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 are and are right. not allowed to do. Some right. people don't. But I, yeah. even if even as like we have to agree because we live in a, a freedom of religion society. We have to agree what's morally acceptable, right? So these kind of conversations have to be had open and honest. Like mm-hmm. but like I said, when you have the situation where. What really bothered me about it, the Me Too movement, was now you're getting guys ousted and there's not even, there's no due process. Right. You're not even giving guys a chance to be, now it's just, oh, whatever, whatever any woman says goes, well, that's bullshit because I've seen a whole bunch of women lie. And I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not marginalizing women's experiences. That's not what I'm doing. But you cannot tell me that there are, that's the other side of the coin where there's something to gain from it. So let's, let's have an open, honest conversation and give people due process. Yeah. Well, I think it's, that's a tough one because... I, the problem is, I think we like, especially like when an athlete, when you have a situation where an athlete gets accused of something. Right. I think the problem is it's actually the other way around, where everyone just assumes the woman is out for money or whatever. Right. right? So it's like you got to flip that because right. that's a that the society assumes it, and and I agree with you that you don't want. I mean, that's an internet problem too. Like the people just put out a headline yeah. and they yeah. assume, and then if you retract it or like, Oh, actually update this headline. No one remembers mm-hmm. that. Damage they just done. remember the first thing. Damage is done. And it, but it's tough because there's that fine line where due process is definitely something that, you know, we ever like, it's a pillar of our society. 100%. Everyone gets their day in court. But the flip side is you can't, 
you know, if someone gets accused of something and they pro- and they might have done it, ninety percent chance they might have done it. You can't just sit there and be like, "Well, we got to hear it. We got to hear it. We got to hear it." Like it's a very, very tough because now you're flipping into the "we don't believe women" thing, and that's that's I would say that's probably a pretty big problem with society. It's probably why Me Too kind of started. That's a, it's a slippery slope, but I don't see it, I don't see any other way because it's if, tough. If, if we're just believing everybody who says everything, then we, uh, but then you come then you then you now now you have to deal with guys who. Uh, uh, have power and like that's when me, when you break down me too the guys who have, people who have off, right people have power system, people yeah. who, who can get out of things right. in the legal system yeah, because they was can, paying what like right. three private investigators right. trying to shut so down New could, York Times yeah. investigation so you, and you could yeah. you could stand up and be like well Harvey Weinstein's never been uh, right. convicted of anything mm-hmm. right. so he technically isn't doesn't do anything wrong like no that's not what the yeah, case is the case is right. that he has money power and he can basically pay people off and pay victims off right. so that they don't say anything I think a lot of it is is willful <clears throat> ignorance too like when you see um, so Ray Rice obviously the video came out right people were trying to you know talk their way out of it before they saw the video they're like oh maybe she fell down or whatever in the elevator and then they saw the video they were confronted with what happened and they kind of had to deal with it and it was shocking to them then you get a case like Greg Hardy where you have all this evidence that points to what he did all this testimony yeah, for, from the girl bad. and how she like just she decided not to press charges at the last second mysteriously um, and then, uh, you know, he gets accepted back in, in, into society, like with open arms. So, okay. Yeah. We're going to put him on the Cowboys. Jerry Jones is going to call him a leader. And, and now he's an and, MMA and, fighter. And my biggest and, problem and is the whole no, thing is the, it's all because there was no <laughs> video evidence. So people could still suspend their disbelief. Right. right. And the big, my biggest problem with Greg Hardy is he's never once shown remorse. Yeah. So I'm a big second chance guy, right. and I agree with like what you were saying about Ray. Wright. Like, if you want people to grow, if you want to, you want to make society be- better. You have to take people who make mistakes and let's just say I mean hitting a woman is more than a mistake. It's yeah. fucking you should it's go bad. to jail for that. But you you have to take people who have made mistakes and figure out a way to to see if they can correct it and get better and 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 go on with their life right. instead of being like all right. You're out. We're never talking to you again. Yeah. But Greg Hardy, he never he never really shows remorse. So yeah. I have no time for a guy like that. Yeah. You don't get a second chance I if you it. don't actually show remorse and yeah. that you're sorry and that what you did was wrong. Yeah, I, I didn't follow the Greg Hardy story too much, but I mean, I think he said sorry, but it was very. It yeah, never no. felt like he was saying sorry. Yeah, no, right. I, I, yeah, he, yeah. He got interviewed when he was <laughs> uh, first joined the Cowboys, and he the half ass attempt that he gave right. was like it was negligible. He right. was like, we're not right. talking about that. Um, you brought up a, an interesting point earlier. I want to jump back to it when you were talking about real, real like, quick I, yeah. I, I, I just for the people out there who are going to kill me in the comments I do not condone domestic violence and I am an advocate of a, if a woman is feeling uh, any kind of way that she's being disrespected to the point of, of you need to tell somebody Tell somebody. Well, that's the biggest part. Tell somebody. That's the biggest part about the Me Too movement and the takeaway is that it needs to get to a point where, and I think it has helped a lot, where women feel empowered and not scared to speak up when they don't feel comfortable. Right. And that should happen. Yeah. Because 100%. it may, hey, maybe, maybe it was a miscommunication. That's fine. But let's, let's, let's at least over report it in that case so that women don't go around feeling like they're always marginalized, like we said, yeah, and feel like they can't come forward right. because the guy's going to fire them or, right. yeah. you know, it's, the, it's, the like lawyers are going to come around. It's or, just a tough situation because, um, in, in order to, to gauge what is true and what is not true, there has to be a process that you have to go through yes. and it has to be an unbiased process. So I don't, I, I hate that women have to feel that are, that have been, uh, victimized, that they have to go through that, that process. But the, as of right now, there is no other way. Yeah. Like that is, right. that is fair. Right. You can't, you can't rewind life and watch, you know, exactly what happened. There right. has to be like some element of of, is this true or is this not true? There was true? a dope Black Mirror episode that you could. Have you seen that? that that's episode? right. That yeah. was a dope episode. That's when you have like a camera embedded in your eye or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that, so, got, that got hemmed up pretty bad. Yeah, dude. It did. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah. I was uh, wanted to jump back to what you said earlier about like just things in general being morally ambiguous. Um, if, you, if you were to like do a hypothetical situation where you took away, let's just say you took away religion, okay? Let's say you <clears> took <throat> away um, every law on the books. Mm-hmm. There were no laws. Uh, do you think people would just be running out there murdering each other? Or do you think most people have a strong enough, just like intrinsic moral conscience where they wouldn't kill anybody? Uh, are you talking about in today's society? Yeah, yeah. a little nature versus nurture. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, because when it comes to domestic violence, I, I think you can make the penalties 
as as stringent as you want. You can say, okay, it's a, a death sentence right. for domestic violence, and it's it's about what's inside that person's head right. that makes them do it. They're not thinking about consequences or anything like that. Right. But just in general, in in, in life as we know, it, like, do you think murder rates would skyrocket? Um. Well, I think you're dealing with two different variables: religion and laws. Religion is an invisible moral code, right? Laws are tangible consequences. So I don't think they're the same thing. I think this is why I feel like uh, morality is, is subjective is because every society has a different law. Every religion has a different law. Um, and it's morally acceptable to those who accept it, right? Um, <clears throat> so if you... For the context of this conversation, I think if you if you did away with laws, yeah, the murder rate would go up. Um, if you did away with religion, um, I'm unsure that the murder rate would go up. Uh, Probably no wars. There would be le- there would be less conflict, especially if you look at things like in the Middle East stuff like that. But um, I think that morality is 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 definitely centered in it's a social construct that we create uh and it's it's like in the 90s gay jokes were okay mm-hmm. right and like now it's not okay so that is an evolution of our morality the the right or wrong of it is is a, is subjective right. right and so there there is no there is no gavel that says yes or no and that's what it, that's what religion is for people which is why I, I think it's important to have a, a religious free society because you're never going to get 300 million people to agree on the same thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so to answer your question laws yes this shit would be crazy religion no because I think people fear consequence like people fear consequence for the most part um but I don't think that if people would be speeding a lot, that's the one consequence. I, would, I, I, would, I speed all the time. Yeah, I, don't yeah. Lie. I speed, <laughs> but I don't. I don't look at that as like a moral. You know what I'm saying? But if you look at like like places in Europe, like there there are places with no speed limit. Like mm-hmm. just be if if everybody was responsible and like understand like don't push it to the limits. Like you can go over 75, you'll be straight. I do speed a lot, but <laughs> I'm a good driver though too. So there, yeah, speeding should be graded on a curve. I, Take know, a driving test, y- and if you're good at it. You should be allowed to speed wherever you want. I feel like there should be like a, um, if you don't have like tickets or wrecks or something like that, there should be like a stripe on your license plate that allows you to run red lights if, if it's if it's right. <laughs> okay. uh, allows you to run stop signs. Uh-huh. Without, because like, like, Drink if, and drive. If it's, two, no, I, <laughs> if it's two in the morning, I'm not sitting at a red light. Right. You know, yeah. I'm not doing it. I'm going through that shit. And I should be allotted that because of my driving mm-hmm. history. Mm-hmm. So uh, that got real deep, man. Yeah, I like that kind of, It's like a, yeah. a freshman year dorm conversation where you get high as shit with your roommate for the <laughs> yeah. first time. Yeah, I should have brought some weed. Um, yeah, we imagine should've. there's no possessions. <laughs> um, I, want, I know you guys have talked about this a lot, but uh, for my fans that don't know, and the, the ESPN debacle. Yeah. So mm-hmm. for those that don't know, you guys had a show uh, with ESPN that lasted a day. Day. Mm-hmm. One episode. One episode. It was about well, two, it was like, weeks. Yeah. two weeks. Two yeah. weeks. And it and 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 it was very short lived. Um and you guys did not leave term on good terms. Correct. Right. Um and it, it it is it's an interesting dynamic to me. So I would like you guys to explain what happened, what's what's the deal with it, and how how are you how are you how is the relationship now? Do you get credentials at ESPN? Uh, no, <laughs> no, the relationship is still. It's very strained. Yeah, we've got some friends at ESPN, some people that like us. We like them. We're friendly with them as individuals, but ESPN their their corporate has a, a policy that that ESPN employees aren't allowed to appear on our show. We're wow. not allowed to. It's a thing like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Like people are told to stop publicly interacting with us at times. Even though that's you know, a little Nazi-ish. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it, so ESPN is, has a very like they're very conscious of not wanting to offend some of their talent over there that might have a problem with us in the past. Um, but I guess if we can start from the beginning. We, yeah, yeah. Let me let me have it. We uh, we got approached by ESPN. They came to us about um, what year and a half ago, two years, yeah, ago, about a year and a half ago. And I think what they wanted was they wanted a little bit of kind of the uh, the outside, the underdog mentality mm-hmm. that that we brought. So back in the day, ESPN themselves they were an underdog. People told them, oh, they're just you no know, cable news network. Nobody's gonna want to watch sports twenty four hours a day. And so they kind of grew from this underdog mentality. In the last 10, 15 years, they've reached a point where they, um, you know, nobody would consider ESPN to be an underdog at anything that they do. Right. They're just giant. They're this huge entity. And so they wanted like a little bit of our low rent shenanigans that we bring to the table. And so they, they reached out to us and we talked about putting together the show. 
And uh, I guess they didn't do their homework uh, based on like you know <laughs> everything about us in the past. So did they give you guys full creative control on, on, uh, in his onset? Eh. Um, I mean, they they we had were... edit, so they, not full creative control. Though you know, it's been it's been really funny because it's like one of those situations where everything leading up to it was very exciting, and we thought it was a great move. Mm-hmm. And then everything when you when you have hindsight, you're like, oh man, that was really stupid of us because. I, I've said that I think I've said this before, but it's almost like um, you know the mafia trying to go legit. Like when the Corleones <laughs> try to like you know start having legit companies, uh, really yeah, start like, washing clothes. Yeah, but you're, 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 your we past tried to is, make an olive oil company, right? And we just we yeah. couldn't stop the drug. Your past is going to be brought up. <laughs> like, let's right. put a little bit of heroin right. in this jar. So your past is going to be brought up, and so I always thought. Um, you know, the, the growth of Barstool and the way we were going, like, this is going to be great for Barstool because we're going to be on ESPN. We're going to get more people to, to kind of be like, all right, these guys are legit. But then you see how everything went down and it's like, oh, well, these guys used to be in the mafia kind of situation. And it's right. almost liberating because it taught me that no matter where we go with our careers, people are going to try to take me down from for for my past. And that's fine. Because at this point, my, my the biggest takeaway was don't get caught in a situation where like politi- internal politics and people with an axe to grind can determine your fate. So when you say past, like what what what, what is well, it's, I mean, about? it came up because of the Sam Ponder stuff. You know, we did a podcast four years ago. And it was it was a, the the funny part is it was a podcast that very few people listened to, and we were half assing it. And my boss. Dave said something uh, about her. Well, I can't remember the exact quote. Like, you, he didn't call her. I don't think he called her a slut. He said, act slutty or <laughs> he something. He got mad because she brought her son or daughter on right. the field. And was Which like, I did too. You're not paid to be a mom. Like, you're right, paid right. to dress up nice right. on the sideline. So right. they brought that up. And then, I mean, she had been basically waiting for that moment and mm. pulled out the stops. And then, kind of like PFT said, there's a lot of internal politics at ESPN. There's a lot of people that have the ears of powerful people mm-hmm. and they're able to uh, kind of sway them to make decisions. Mm-hmm. And that's fine because, I, you know, I, w- looking back on it, it was going to be a really cool experience and we probably would have gained a lot more fans coming to Barstool mm-hmm. just by like recognition and seeing us on ESPN being, you know, funny hopefully. But it also would have it left us open to these people being able to be like, well, look at what they said here, and look at what they did here, and and these guys can't be here, and, and right. it's fine. Like I, I'm actually, I'm actually, it uh, it hurt really bad for the first couple weeks after, and then I got this like incredible peace of mind, mm-hmm. and that's that I'm going to be fine no matter what, and mm-hmm. these people can't take me down, and just going to keep doing what I'm doing and not get involved in a spot where you know, politics and inside, you know, you know, going at each other can right. take us down. Do so you, now it feels great. So you, you now I just admit that I'm in the mafia. <laughs> I'm not trying to do the olive oil business. So I think that's anymore. where that's where y'all was, yeah. um that's where the underdog shit comes from. Is right. Because even though you might be beating them in numbers, it's still that corporate structure and right. it's just like us first. And it was a man. mistake, but I, I think I, I would be. Do you hard. feel like it was a mistake, though? I, I, I yeah, think it was, it was a mistake was, for sure. It was a mistake to Why, get though? in bed because, with the because ESPN. If, we, uh, I'll be honest, we got, I'm speaking for myself at least, got a little bit seduced by the fact that, hey, we're right. going to be on ESPN. I mean, I grew up watching ESPN. Right. It's, it's, a, br- it's, it's, it's a brand. It's right. a brand. You know, like I, I grew up watching Dan Patrick and Keith Olbermann on SportsCenter. And, you know, I wanted to be them when I grew up. It, uh, it, yeah. and, and so, like, there, there was a little bit of that, like, seduction where it was like, okay, we're going to be on ESPN. This is awesome. And I think that kind of clouded our judgment a little bit and made us overlook a lot of the very obvious negatives that were coming at us. And so we just kind of washed those away. And then, you know, the way that it, it flamed out, I'm glad that it flamed out in one week as opposed to in five or six so weeks. So do you mm-hmm. think it was negative for y'all or positive? I think positive I, in I the think long run. Yeah. Long run, yeah. it's going to be yeah. a positive. Yeah. Short term, yeah. big cat's right. Like, it, yeah. it stung. It sucked. Right. Uh, just for the ego purpose. Exactly. Right. But, right. But, but, but jumping back to what I said, like, if, if it was five or six weeks of doing the show and then it got canceled, it would be pretty obvious that it was because our show sucked, right? right, right. Since it was about one one week or like half a scale. You'll never Mucci. know if your show sucks. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah well, one will never know, and two, it was very obviously about things that had nothing to do with right. the actual show right. itself. Right. And I think it also, uh, when you kind of deconstruct how it all went down, we're competitive guys. You know, and we want to keep succeeding, right. and we're you know 
we're we work really really hard and we want to think things to be successful and the natural evolution of what we had created on the podcast was putting it on some kind of television platform right, right. so that was just in our mind like all right we've conquered like a good base of followers that will listen to our podcast let's get to that next level right. when in reality the lesson I learned, sometimes the next <laughs> level isn't needed. Sometimes you nah. get on the next level on your own. You and, guys are the next level. Right, though. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, it, and that was actually the, that was a, the mo- the aha moment for me. It was probably a week after and I was bummed out for about a week. And then I had this moment like, wait, hold on. So we got our show canceled, but we still have the number one sports podcast. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a pretty fucking good, you know, yeah. prize there that well, you can fall the, back on. That's so, the, like, that's the we problem still they're talk having. to people. Yeah, that's right. the yeah. problem they're having is TV's dying. Right. Nobody watches TV anymore. Right. Don't, the, the, it is, but it isn't. It's dying. So, it is dying. Give it to me. But it still is a medium that you can't replicate anywhere else. So, you can. But it's like anyone, a news, you can't replicate a right. newspaper. Okay, but, okay, so here, <laughs> you know, but here, here's why, here's where it's different. So, a podcast, anyone can start a podcast. True. There is no time slot for a podcast. True. A TV, there's 24 hours a day. There's only a certain amount of program that can go on that station. So that is an exclusive it, slot. So it's this exclusivity. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it's just like there are people still watch TV. I know it's, but it's not a lot, you know, it's definitely going down. But, 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 but you understand what I'm saying? But this like is why you, you, when you get a TV show, you're reaching a certain amount of people that you might not be able to reach with everyone who can create a podcast. But I think it's, I think it's, it's just the allure of it more than the actual substantive uh execution of it. I mean, we got we saw a bump in just everything when we when we announced it, when we were I mean, I it definitely I I still think I I completely I think, agree that TV's dying, but yes. I still think there is a certain amount of cachet and also eyeballs and just like media attention that comes yes. with TV so, that you can't replicate anywhere else. So media attention, with the media attention that there's a lot of legacy TV viewers out there. You know, like anyone past the age of I'd say 35. Right. I'd say close to 100% of them watch TV in some shape mm, or form. 35. I'd say 35 mm. is about the... I'd say like, about 40 plus, bro. Okay, well, 35 for, yeah, is young. 40 plus, but still, I mean, there are a shitload of baby boomers out there that just won't die. So there's yeah, still... Like my, my dad <laughs> religiously watches MSNBC. Mm-hmm. Exactly, it's, yeah. So, so there, there's... All the time. There are a ton of people out there that still do watch TV, and, and those same people... They're going to die soon. Are, ...are the same people that, uh, like Big Cat said, they, they do a lot of the media out there. So, like, you've got... All these, you know, like uh, all these websites and all these newspapers were writing about us when they've probably never written the words Barstool Sports right. in the history of their publication. Right. So it's more the media, the flooding of the media. Is a, what it, was, is what it, it was. It was definitely a different audience than we were reaching before. Right. Right. It, so, it, so okay. So how do you how do you how do you how do you conquer that hurdle in the future of trying to reach a different audience? I mean. That's, I mean, that's coming on the now. Do you have the podcast? answer? Yeah, yeah, come on my podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah come on your podcast. No, I mean, but that is, I mean, it's, it's a combination. I mean, it's, it's a lot of different things, right. and it's, you know, the slow growth. You know, we went from zero to sixty really fast. Now we're still growing. You know, our podcast has has never had a a down month. You know what I mean? It's always gained. <laughs> gained listeners but but I'm saying like <laughs> nah, but yeah. it's less obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't gain as many listeners now right. than you did in month 3 right. because so it is hard to find a way to always stay where you know it's it's through guests we call, it, through, you call these uh, first world problems yeah I, mean, <laughs> it is. I know it sounds stupid to say it but you, but it's a good question of how do you keep you know evolving and trying to find new so listeners I, I, do, I, I, I saw that um like so like with um, one of my Favorite follows on Twitter is Tyler. I am. Oh, yeah. he's here. Is he actually in New York? Yeah, he's here. Yeah, he, he, he flew in this morning. He's here. I yeah. gotta say, what's up? Yeah, to you know he's here. Yeah, oh, yeah. damn! Definitely. Before I leave, um, but so you guys take somebody like that who has an avid black Twitter following, mm-hmm. and and you. He's white though. You know that, right? I'll be so mad. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. He's not. He's not. <laughs> Could you imagine if he was like, hey, this is Tyler I Am. He's, he's actually been, Gary yeah. from, uh, uh, from, from from BuzzFeed. Buzz he's from yeah. Connecticut. Yeah. 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 But um Oh, that would like, be great. Like you got you got to reach that 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 market. It's like a different market. Yeah. So like yeah. that's that's yeah. the kind of things you have to but that I think that's that's what you do. You reach um but but what you, what you're doing is which is why I feel like TV is is it's dead and it's going it's gonna it's gonna do nothing else but this and maybe spikes here and there. But because people don't consume information like they used to. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not going home sitting down on my couch and flipping on a TV. Like I I pull up my phone, I pull up my iPad or I connect my 
phone to my TV, right? And I and I scour the internet for for new information. Yeah. So the way you guys are are are, are growing is just like you're doing. Like you, you get small pockets here, small pockets there, and then right. You need to talk pockets. to more rappers, probably. Yeah, we. I mean, we definitely we've we've always enjoyed. We had the Super Trooper guys in here last week, and it's like we got to do. We probably got to do more interviews with people outside the sports yeah. world because Rita's Cube on that's pretty good. At the end of the day, yeah, super the, dope. the best compliment I've ever gotten for our podcast was someone said. Um, a girl came up to me and was like, I don't know, half the time I don't know what you guys are talking about. Like, I don't know when you go on these tangents about Todd Haley wanting to fight every Big Ben and all this <laughs> shit, but the way you talk about sports is funny. Yeah. And that's the best comment because, like, that's the, the umbrella we're trying to get where you don't have to be a diehard sports fan to listen to us. Yeah. You just have to think what how we approach, like, our worldview and sports view is funny. Is there is there an end goal? Like, if, if, if a... Um, yeah, fucking make bank, dude. There's <laughs> Drive a range, <laughs> but if, if 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 an ABC comes to you and says we want a Barstool Sports channel, I'm out. I'm out on all. I'm out on on TV. traditional media. Yeah, I'm out on like so doing. You, you agree with me? It's just yeah. That. Well, yeah. It, but I got there in a weird way. Like, so <laughs> I, I always thought that it would it would kind of we would keep getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Get a TV show, and now I'm just like. I don't want any of that. Right. Yeah. So, so all the big traditional media companies, they're in a race right now because they, they're not dumb, okay? They, they know that their traditional forms of broadcasting are dying. So the easy way out for them is to just buy somebody else that's good at yep. it. And what that ends up doing, they, they will generally just turn it into something very inauthentic. Like if you see yeah. ESPN, I'm sure they're trying to do like a Snapchat shows or whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like it's still corporate ESPN mm -hmm. just trying to relate a new way. As opposed to us, who you know, which comes we, off as gimmicky anyway. It, it does. It comes yeah. off a little gimmicky sometimes. So I think that I think Big Cat's right. I think we're in a position right now where we can we can speak to people in their own language using their technology that they prefer to use. I think that's a really good position for us to be in with with no oversight. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's because I, I the ESPN thing. As much as it sucked, it was the most liberating moment. It's become the most liberating moment in my career mm. because it was the first time where I had a moment where I was like, you know what. I'm going to be fine. Right. Like, I'm going to be fine. People who have followed me and enjoy what I do, they're going to keep following me and enjoy what I do, whether I'm on ESPN or not. Right. So that liberation has been unbelievable. And it's been right. like my peace of mind, like, has just been incredible the last six months or whatever it's been. Is there like a, is there like a whiteboard somewhere in here where you're like, we want this demographic. How do we get this demographic? Mm. Mm. We'd like more white guys. We don't have enough. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have like a built-in audience of like Southern fraternities? Absolutely. What you do is with the video, you just get big jars of no. mayonnaise, yeah, yeah, and raisins. No, we we to be and, and yeah. come. To be honest, we we think of it. Uh, we think of it as uh, we don't see color, we don't see gender. So it's 2018. We uh, actually just see regions. So we got to get bigger out west. We got to really? get bigger south. Yeah. Okay. So we don't see, I, I don't personally see it as like, we need more of this demographic. We just need more people out West to know who we are. You know you. what I mean? Cause we're yeah. just, no, we have never been so you need like a, a liberal hippie podcast, a vegan podcast, a hacky sack podcast. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty much. You. No, we just need to go there. Right. We need to go out West and just and put our boots a, on the ground and just walk around. Vegan podcast. Yeah. If you know anybody like that, let us know. I mean, I will definitely let you know. Cause we can expand. Yeah. I'll definitely let you know. Uh, oh, and you can have a heritage, not hate podcast too. That's how you mm -hmm. get the okay. South. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's how you mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Put Dude, those monuments back up. I want to ask you this, man. Cause, um, you, you, you asked me about it. Do you think they should tear down RG3 statue? <laughs> I mean, a lot of problematic stuff under Baylor's, under our Pryles regime. Yeah. Uh, them, them, them micro braids, I, I'm not a fan of anyway. So. Uh, um, uh, you, um, you told me this, or you brought it up when, when I was on y'all's podcast, the, um, the J.J. Watt thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that a real thing? Like, y'all oh, really yeah. don't fuck with him? We uh, kind of fuck with him a little bit. It's, we moderately fuck with him. We, so it started out as us just like needling him, needling him, needling him, and it reached a point where... Um, we kind of wanted to bury the hatchet with him, and I think we did bury the hatchet. Well, We're on good terms now, he, but yeah. But he's not like we don't look at JJ Watt and with like a sense of reverence or anything right. like right. that. Here, here's the premise behind what we did was that JJ Watt we thought was uh, almost like a fake character. 
<laughs> and it, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to be Captain America. Like, yeah. no one can be as wholesome as J.J. Watt, right? right? Like, that just doesn't compute in your brain. Right. And then we went and met him, and we're like, wait, fuck, this is how he is. Okay. So that now we kind of like, all right, yeah, he he's is just a kind of really a good dude. Okay. <laughs> he's just a really good dude from Wisconsin that yeah, loves to talk about his, you know, great grandmother. I feel you. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, what the what the what the what the root of it was? It was more just him trying to be perfect all the time, right. and that that I, like bothers. I you. usually say like if you if you portray perfection, you probably got some bodies in your right. Closet. But I think he actually just is perfect, except he gets injured all the time. So I guess he's not. I mean, I can relate. Yeah, <laughs> true. I mean, I you was, guys I, were both soft. <laughs> I, used to, I used to tell people all the time, like, man, you get injured all the time. I was like, imagine going to work, dog, and there's two two ambulances on in, in the end of each. Door right. right. You have a high probability of getting hurt yeah. too. You feel yeah. Me? Would you and JJ get pissed off at like who got the nice bed in the training room? <laughs> like, hey man, that, you know that's mine. I I, I held the uh, the crown for the injury injury bug when I was there. He wasn't really. That's when he was super balling. Mm -hmm. Now he's he's going through it. Yeah. Honestly, How, if I get a guaranteed contract or, or a lot of guaranteed money, I would fake the shit out yeah, of the injury. Absolutely. <laughs> if I had uh, if I had ten carries on the goal line. And with the Texans right now, right. would I score? No. No? Well, it, de it depends on how good the blocking was, but if you had to make something happen, no. Nah. Yeah. D but what if the blocking's good? You think I, I would be yeah, able yeah, to get to I the hole? I mean, there's a lot of walk-in touchdowns. Yeah. Really touch. yeah. Okay. It's possible. But the walk-in touchdowns, you still got to run a little fast to start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but sometimes the holes are big. Wait, well, you got to hit the hole. Okay, mm -hmm. it's tough. I don't know what you what you what you about. Oh, two, if I couldn't get into two forty, two forty five, I was like two thirty. Come on, man. Really? Yeah. I'm trying to. I mean, put your head bad. down. I was <laughs> in Colorado. <laughs> I was in Colorado <laughs> all weekend, and I might have over. Um, yes. Okay. So right now I'm walking around two forty. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying I'm, <laughs> fine. I can fine. gauge it pretty well. But I was two thirty last week. I can gauge it pretty. I had well. a long weekend. Do you ever have a long weekend? Never. Sue me. Never have had a long weekend. <laughs> you know, I used to. That's, that was the thing about me. Friday, <laughs> Saturday night was literally like. Like, let's have let's do we want pizza or Chinese food? Like why not both? So that's, that's the weekend I that's, had. That's a yeah. that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. The one thing uh, I hated when I was when I was like training, I was in training. I have the body type of like I can gain ten to fifteen pounds in a weekend. Same. I fucking hate that. Yeah, shit. it's the worst. Yeah, but it, it takes me us athletes two, three weeks to I know. lose it. Yes, I hate these it's, it's the curse of being an athlete. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's tough. Yeah, man. So. uh Yo, so I'm I'm coming out with. I just want to ask you guys this. So I'm coming out with because you guys are bar stool sports, and I'm I obviously come from the sports ilk, and I'm coming out with an album. Okay. And uh, are you fuck? Are you gonna fucking try to make us buy your CD right now? Jesus yeah, Christ! Here's the, you're I, like, I, I, hey, I, I, oh, I'm, it's just ten dollars. <laughs> you're just handing out CDs. No, Is that, that, that was this whole thing. That was the whole we're thing. We're just trying to get us to buy your CD. You up, man. You could have just stood outside of our <laughs> office. I would have just given you ten dollars. No, but um, the funny thing is um. I've I've been working on this for around three a good three years, right? And so I I I, I love I love um, people that are not biased in their opinion and they give me their real opinion. So uh, a part of of what I gauge the success of this album would be people giving it an honest listen okay. before they write it okay. off, right? Yeah. So like I mean, just hearing that I have an album, what's the first thing that you think of? Probably like, stinks. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it stinks. Probably trash, right? <laughs> nah, no, and, and that's and that's the stereotype that I'm that I'm fighting. But um, that's that's that, to me that's that's the well, thing. No, no, no. For, first, I need to know like what kind of album is it? What, right, what yeah. type of music? It's is definitely it? rap, hip hop. But okay. it's a um, it's so I grew up in a in a household where it was uh, very musically influenced, but like an eclectic taste. So I, I my mother was from the country, so she listened to Patsy Cline, she listened to the Beach Boys, and my father was from South Central, he listened to Parliament, Confunction, shit like that. And so that's what I grew up listening to uh, uh, along with my generation, right? So I have this really good foundation of what good mm -hmm. music is. Mm -hmm. And so I have a, a, a profound respect for it. And so <clears throat> I've been making music since I was like 12 years old. And so when I, 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 when I decided, okay, I wanna put out a project, I had that thought when I was in the NFL. Um, so I've recorded thousands of songs over my life lifetime, but I never felt like I could give it the the care it needed in order to be a quality project. And so when I retired, I was like, I could finally do this with respect to the to the craft and the genre. And so now that it's out, I'm really doing my best to try to convince people. Like I understand the stereotypes, like I get it, man. But if you give it an honest listen, I can almost guarantee that you'll walk away like you know what? At least he respects it. I'm gonna give it an honest listen. Yeah, I I'm gonna give that. it honest listen. You know what we need to do? We need to get out in front of this. So we need to uh get people listening to like Kobe's album again. 
Because that thing was trash. Yeah. Yeah. And then, we can, and then <laughs> people will compare. They'll be like, athlete to athlete. Yeah. Arian I, Foster's album, I can, pretty fucking good. I can guarantee he's better than that. Okay. okay. What about Cole Beasley's album? Who? Mm. The wide receiver on the Cowboys. I he put out a rap even, song too. I, I didn't even. It's not good. Okay, it's really yeah. Really but bad. but the, it's it's those two brains are they don't they don't correlate. Yeah. Well, so uh-huh. and I don't know what it is, but mine does. I feel like <laughs> I feel like you'd be uh, like Kid Cudi on steroids, like the most introspective <laughs> rapper of all time. Yeah. Well, so I, so we'll, we'll send we'll send you the album. Okay. It, it comes out April 26th. So by the time this comes out, it should be out already. But it comes out April 26th, man. So I would appreciate the I appreciate the feedback, positive or negative, though, because I'm not I'm not one of these cats who's like, yo, it's fucked up. You don't like my shit. Like, if you think that you put anything out and you think 300 million people are gonna all agree yep, and like yeah. it, like you're an idiot. Well, yep. so, the the fact that you waited until you retired, I think. One was a smart move because right. otherwise it falls into the genre of okay, here's an athlete that's also right. putting out music. Right. Um, but then the fact that it took you three years tells me that you at least you put a lot of effort into it and you put care into it. And so I I feel like it's gotta you have a better chance than most. I, I appreciate that. Was that was just a really nice way of PFT saying you tried. <laughs> you tried. So good job on trying, Arian. Way to no, go. So, so, <laughs> his little, his little uh, a boat of confidence is yeah. um, you're obviously aware of like Scarface or Bumby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So so those dudes are Who's like the pack guy. UGK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You go, UGK. So some Pinks, of these, those, those are those are rappers. Yeah. Yeah, we know. Scarface and <laughs> What was the other one? Bun B. Bun B. <laughs> yeah. Scarface and Bun B. You didn't know who they were? No, I know. Houston legend. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that Houston, Houston legend in the game. I have uh, I have played it for them. Um, what uh, they say? Uh, th- were they Scar- high? Scarface. Scarface. Were they both- high? No, they weren't high. Okay. They were regular uh, voting voting citizens. Because that's what you, the other thing you can do. PR wise, get people uh, high. Just no, just be like, you gotta listen to it high. But Grateful Dead made a whole fucking career out of that. Really, you don't understand the song until you're high. Well, I feel like <laughs> you don't understand life until you're high. True, it's an, mm-hmm. ama- it's an amazing thing. But they loved it, man. Um, and they, he actually put me in touch with his publicist to try to promote it. It was a dope, dope thing. But that was really gratifying when legends talk to you and say like, "Yo," and they don't have anything to gain, right, right. For, for me, a retired football player. So it was dope, man. So like, that's the whole goal is to just. Ha- Ask people to give it a real good listen, and hopefully they do, man. Okay, you give yourself a review no. in ten words or less. <clears throat> um, that's one. <laughs> um, is a word. Yep. Or, Three, four. That's tough. Four. Well, that's six. It's fucking great. Okay. <laughs> that's seven, eight. <laughs> what would you rank it on the five ball scale? So we have a guy here, Glenny Balls. Right. So five is the best. To me, to me, it's a four. Four, four balls. Four balls. Four balls. Smart. You leave yourself a little bit. <laughs> no, you got to. I'm gonna classic my first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm right. proud. I'm very proud. What's it of called? It, though. Right. It's, called, it's called Flamingo and Kovo. I can't wait till you sell out and I can be like, I listen to Arian's first album. That'd be dope. It's gonna be great. That would be dope, man. Be like this is, tra- this is trash. Now. Do you swear? This sixth <laughs> album is trash. Do you cuss on it? Because I don't listen to songs with swears. I do, but man up. I don't like language. Do you yeah. say the, I don't like language. Do you say the N word? I do say the N word. Oh, yeah. So, so am just, I allowed to like a song that has that word? In absolutely. It? Okay. okay. Absolutely. I'm not the language police, so I'm not one of those black people who's like, don't say it. But oh no, I don't I, say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, I doubt You're trying to trap us into saying, yeah, 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 yeah. One time for work. the camera, just look and say, <laughs> yeah. nigga, for me. <laughs> Nah, um, no, that's a funny little story. I'm, I'm not like a, a language police. I don't, can, I don't. I think it's corny when white people say it, or anybody other than black people say it. But like, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I have too much. I have four kids. I'm not trying to police y'all. I just replace it with friend. My friend. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, in lyrics. That's what I do. Nice. Yeah, that's so you much. Know, you have to put yeah. so much thought into that. Yeah. I feel you though. That's yeah. tough. That's, that's, that's how woke I am. Persecuted yeah. white men yeah. have to. Right. That's just one of the many things that we have to do yeah. that makes Look it tough us. for us. Yeah, no, it's tough. You guys yeah. are marginalized. You yeah. can't yeah. say words, man. Yeah. yeah. For real. I got to wake up every morning and remind myself to not say racist things. <laughs> yeah. Think about my struggle. <laughs> like low key, dude. That's like a real thing with y'all. That's funny as hell. But yo, I appreciate y'all. Wait, I had one more question. Oh, no, shoot. Okay. The challenge. What happened? Okay, so um, <laughs> I'm a big challenge fan. I yeah, haven't watched in a while. I didn't know how many people were fans. It of was that TJ shit. on the show. Uh, TJ Lavin. I don't think so. Okay, but I'm awful with names, so he might have been. Okay. He was the host. Was he hosting it? Is that the dude that was like a wrestler? No, he's, he's a BMX match. writer. Yeah, but he might not be know. the host anymore. He. Oh, I think they might have had the guy, someone. Do you else. know the guy that was the challenge? Fuck, I, I met him. I even exchanged numbers, but I'm shitty with names. Okay. I see his face. Yeah. Was uh, Johnny Bananas on this one? No, I heard I heard Tony. about him, but from everybody. Tony, yeah, Tony, 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 Tony fucked you over. That. So Tony. what happened? Uh, so 
uh, I'm gonna be 100 percent honest, and I love the people at MTV that let me on the show. Like I, it was it was strictly for charity, and like I'm not a reality TV show guy, and it showed. It's because I don't know how the game's played. Mm -hmm. I'm taking people at their word because this I'm, is their life. Yeah, like, this it, is they know this. And very so well. the funny thing is, is off camera, like there was like a big dispute afterwards because uh because what happened was for people that don't know i was on mtv's challenge and uh obviously i was one of the stronger players and they somehow convinced me to go first because they were going to put a, a weaker player so we'll have the advantage stupid ass plan but um i i didn't i didn't understand how the game was played one I had shit to do the next week, and so mm. it wasn't that, that big of a deal to me. Right, you wanted to get voted off. Yeah, I, it's not that I wanted to get voted off, but it, it, I was I was just indifferent about it. I was yeah. like I don't I don't, I'm, I don't have to be here. Um, but the 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 people kind of coerced me into like. Yeah, yeah, you should go. Yeah, I'd say you made a mistake when you say you, you took everyone like to, to be honest yeah, on a reality television so, so, show. So after, but you see, that's 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 my nature. My nature is like I'll I'll I'll, I'll take you at your word until you show me different. Mm -hmm. And so like we're talking about this at at the end of the like off camera, like we're at brunch right before I leave, and I'm like like it's just like it's super phony. Like you you hear about reality TV people being phony, but then when you see it, it's crazy. Like they're like we're we're not phony. Like we're just playing a game. Like think of it like you're playing Uno with your friends. Like you mm -hmm. you'll deceit them. In the game, I'm like, this is not Uno. Yeah, like right. this is, we're talking and right. uh, and you're lying to me. Like, you're right. saying like this is all satire. It's right. all yeah. a joke. Yeah. Yeah. So and they're right. actually doing I think, it. I think that's just how they um, compartmentalize it yes. in their heads, so they don't feel yeah. like bad people. Uh -huh. Right. Which I mean, I, I, don't get me wrong. I don't have any problems with do do you. And if you're a reality TV star, make your money how you want to make it. But just I, I think it's a corny and phony thing to do. Mm -hmm. But you know, it is what it is, man. I enjoyed my time. Made some mm -hmm. cool people there. So how long were you on the show? Uh, like a day. <laughs> oh, us, so we both wow. lasted the same amount of time yeah. on TV. We yeah. have so much in common. There we go. <laughs> if you guys need an atheist, vegan, anti-God podcast, I'm. Wait, wait. God. I thought you are weren't you a vegan anti? anymore. I'm not a vegan. Yeah, okay. are, are you anti-God? No, no, I'm not anti. Well, oh. So, so if you, now if you're anti-God, that means that you're not an atheist because you can't be against something that doesn't exist. No, no, I'm anti-thought of God. I would probably be. What mad. happens when you die? Where, where, where do you go? Uh, probably the same place you go when you before you were born. Which is so. You're the Miami back Dolphins. In my, back in my dad's <laughs> testicles, <laughs> or your mom's vagina. Either one. Well, no, no yeah. definitely my started the, in the yeah. testicles. Allegedly, sperm. You, well, we, don't know, we don't know testicles. where life started. Yeah. We don't know where life started. Oh right. shit! Now you're about Wait, to really. Blow we're, we're, back, we're back to we're back to politics. Yeah, that, people people Fuck. pick it because they feel like they know where life starts. Mm -hmm. We don't know. You got you ha you should have brought weed for this kind of conversation. I would have been dope. Tell little you little what, we are much. we are a pro anti God podcast because we like you. A yeah. pro anti God yeah. podcast. Yeah. There's so much going we're on. We're a be yourself <laughs> podcast. Uh -huh. I, I, Just be yourself. I fuck with Joe. I don't think I I don't think I used to like you guys. Yeah, I don't think so either. But it was never like on no like because I looked at your content and judged you. Just like you probably said some shit. I was like, well, our intern put you in a in. A mental pretzel yeah, no, yeah, and he no, fucking no, made you submit yeah, oh, he right. had to tap out is Billy he here? Football no Billy Football's not here because he, he called you a fraud vegan yeah, yeah fraud because you wanted to fight a wolf yeah <laughs> did you ever say how you'd go about fighting the wolf no because it, I, I never thought about it that deep I, I thought well, about well then go ahead how would you fight a wolf I, I would try not to first of all but yeah. if I did like you have to go for his jaw okay Okay. Like Next. because that's his only weapon. So yeah. you would target a very like slender part of the wolf's body with one to. precise punch. You have to. Would you punch him in the face? I would probably try not to use my hands as yeah, much. Yeah, you got to use right? my feet. Keep, yep. keep him off me with my feet, and I would try to pick but up. Yeah, a but if he if he gets your if he gets his jaw on your feet, it's lights out because now you're compromised. Of course, this is this that's the fight though. I actually do. I'm gonna, know try how to, to, I'm gonna let him not get my feet. I know how to defeat a wolf. Like I, I've really studied this. Before. You gotta snap his windpipe. Here's, here's get, what you do. You get him high. Yeah, he, well, yeah, you blow in his ear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, what you do if you have a jacket on? Okay, if you're if anybody out there listening is ever in a fight with a wolf, I'm gonna save your life right now. You wrap your jacket around your arm, okay? You wave your arm in front of it. You let it bite onto your arm because it's going to hang on. So it sinks its teeth into that jacket that's wrapped around your arm, and then you just kick it in the nuts just repeatedly yeah. as it's hanging what if it's off. female you. wolf? Then you just kick in the ovaries. <laughs> okay. Just blast no, your cervix. You, you actually were halfway there. Then you just snap its windpipe. Grab how, its how are you going to know if it's a male or a female wolf like while you're getting gnawed well, on? I mean, I'm just going to kick yeah. in the abdomen. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just make it internally. Big. If it if it's if it's a female wolf, I'm going to kick where the nuts would be if it was a male wolf. Anyways. I think I just put in a headlock. <laughs> You know what I would do? I would, I would just pet it. I would just be like, "You're a good boy." Yeah, yeah just give it a love treat. me or girl. Right. Yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> but uh, yo, I appreciate y'all coming you. on my podcast. This is fun. I'm actually, I'm going to listen to your song. Nah, or is it a full album? It's a full I'm album. not, but I'm going to ask song. him how. It I'm going to listen sure. to it. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll be out. And then I'm going to pretend. Tell you what, what I'm going to do? I'm going to take your songs. I'm going to steal. Well, not steal. I'm going to sample 
your beats. Please and do. Then I, and then I'm going to rap over them, send them back to you. Please do. Just improve them a little and bit. And then I'll, I'll, I'll come back with a diss track and tell you how oh, wacky yes. it was. Yeah. 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 We can have a whole thing. I like Podcast that. war. We'll yep. market it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'll be, be good for business. Yeah. No, for sure. But I, I appreciate y'all, man. Um, If you're fans of the podcast, you know that we asked every fan or every every guest to uh, end it the same way. And we're, I'm trying to get Jim Carrey on my podcast. And so we've asked every guest, every guest to try to advocate for Jim Carrey to come on my podcast. Why do you want him? Because Jim Carrey is He's, most, isn't he an anti-vaxxer? He is. I, I'm That's not, pretty fucked up. I'm not a. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm not a hundred percent in line with all his ideals, but I think he has some brilliance in him, mm-hmm. and I just wanted to explore his brain. He's a hmm. really brilliant man. Interesting. Jim, I loved you in Ace Ventura too. Truman Show was pretty is damn that, good. Can I look at the camera? Truman Truman Show was was pretty good. Jim, uh, you remember <laughs> Liar Liar, where you couldn't tell a lie? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you a lie right now. Don't go on Aaron Foster's <laughs> oh, podcast. Also, liar, liar, that um, the, the woman who had big tits. Yeah. That was pretty cool. In your bra. <laughs> mm-hmm. She was in the courtroom. Remember that? Jim, if you, remember that? Jim, if you want to be exposed yeah. to more great conversation like this, go on Aaron Foster's <laughs> Free podcast. Free tits if you come on Aaron Foster's podcast. Mm-hmm. He promises that he won't vaccinate you or anybody that you know. <laughs> yeah. Just maybe a little. Pol- just, just, a little bit, just a little prick. Just a drop of mercury just on your tongue. Just a little prick. <laughs> yeah. So we'll talk chemtrails. It'll be fun. I think that's gonna do it. Yeah, that's good. We got it. We got drop it. Drop a mercury every time. That's yeah. hilarious, man. Much love. I appreciate it. All right, thanks. thanks. Man. <laughs>